Well, praise the Lord. I'm so happy to be back in Joburg. South Africa is one of my favorite places to eat in the world. People ask me, do they eat vegetables in South Africa? I say yes, but many of my friends say chicken's a vegetable here. But anyway, (laughs) you know, I love all my steak in America, but I love the steak here as well. Humor aside, you live in one of the most beautiful countries in the world. And I'm not really your normal human. I've been to lots of countries. Let me tell you, everybody always wants to write South Africa off. I can remember back when apartheid ended and President Mandela just, God put him as president. All kinds of crazy prophets in America, it's all over, it's going to end in blood. They're wrong then, they're wrong now. God has a plan for this nation. And, and before I'm done, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about where I see us. Then Pastor Simon will have a map up for me of the world. I'll talk a bit about what I see happening in the Caribbean, your involvement, I believe it's St. Thomas, right? Then I want to talk about some things in Africa, and then I want to talk personally as well. Holy Spirit, here we are in your presence. There's no better place to be. We felt your presence unusually today during worship. It brought many of us to our knees, and we're thankful for that, Lord. Amen. I want to describe this brief vignette visited. It's a word you see throughout Scripture that describes when God becomes very personal with a person, a people, or a nation, and they meet him in an extraordinary way. I want to help you today to recognize and respond to the Holy Spirit's visitation here in Joburg, in South Africa, in Africa, and the world. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near, Isaiah 55, 6. Now we know theologically the Apostle Paul says, you who for far away have been brought near. So you can always find our Heavenly Father through the redemptive work of his Son if you reach out. But there are times in human history where God manifests his presence in such a way that it's more apparent that it seems easier to find him, that he draws near where it seems it's easier to call on him. In Acts 3, 19 and 20, Peter's preaching talks about if you repent and your sins will be blotted out, something will come from the presence of God. He calls them times of refreshing. History calls them a religious awakenings, History calls them revivals. Africa's been touched by many of them. The United States has been touched by many of them. The world has. Now, why do I say this? I believe we're in the beginning stages of another time of refreshing. One that won't just be on the continent of Africa or in the continent of North America. One that will touch every part of the world. Why would I believe that? What does that mean to South Africa? And how can you respond to that? Let me be prophetic for a moment and just take four or five minutes and take you through these last few years. My my first perception of what was coming on our world began December 31st, 2018. I attend an every nation church called Bethel World Outreach Center. Um, My pastor and his wife are African-American. The church is predominantly African-American. Kathy and I have been involved for 30 years there. I'm an elder. I'm on the board there. 
Some of you may know Tim Johnson, that name. He pastored there. Rice Brooks, he pastored there. And um, you're wondering, do we have good music? Yes, we do. <laughs> have you ever heard the name B.B. Winings, C.C. Winings? The youngest daughter of that family, Debbie, is our pastor's wife. Can Debbie sing? Yes. She, they all sing, but that's another matter. She opened for Whitney Houston around the world when she was 16. She can sing. I might add Whitney would cry most every night and study the Bible with her. And so typically on New Year's Eve, they asked me to speak. It's called our Happy New Year's Eve service. This would be known as the unhappy New Year's Eve service. I was sitting on the front row. We were worshiping. Building was full. A lot of our intercessors, leaders were there. We're in multiple services, multiple sites like you guys. And all of a sudden, my world changed. And I saw the crushing blows that would come to America in the world. I can't explain it. America was crushed by something. New York swamped. I can hear people crying out for mercy for the government to save them. I could see the West Coast stand on end and people begin to run to leave California and some of those states. I was frightened. I've got kids in California. I've got kids in New York City. Quite honestly, I did not know what to do. I kept hearing the word 17 months, 17 months. I literally thought all the United States was going to slide into the Atlantic Ocean. God says, don't be afraid. I'll catch you. And his hand came and his I was trying to figure that out. Pastor James said, we have our elder, our beloved board member preaching tonight. I go, you will regret this. But anyway, I stood up trying to think, how best do you tell people your country is about ready to be destroyed? Let me say happy new year. But anyway, I began to prophesy and say, we're going to come into a terrible shaking. In fact, 17 months from now, America will come into a time of ethnic pain again as God comes to deal with the great sin of America, racism, that flows out of slavery. 17 months from then, within a give and take a few days, Mr. Floyd was murdered in Minneapolis. Only God would know those things. And I said, in that 17 months comes, we'll be halfway done. I thought, we'll see what that means, but anyway, and I said, everyone's going to say it's over. America's so badly polarized. There's no healing in healing that America's going to end in anarchy. God says America won't end in anarchy. You'll end in revival and I'll pour out my spirit once again. Now that word sustained me. But in May of 2019, I went to the mountains of Tennessee to pray. I was troubled. What was coming on the earth? I could just feel it. So on May 18th, praying, the Lord said, Jim, America's getting ready to come a very dangerous place. It's going to be very dangerous. You better draw close to me. I thought, well, like, what's that mean? And the next morning, the Lord said, let me show you May 19th of 2019 what's coming on the world. And I was, saw the nation of China. And out of the nation of China came this terrible river of mindless death. And the Lord said, this river from every nation, it will go killing, bringing death and woe. Took me a few months to figure out that was COVID and it was going to go to the earth. And so that led me into a deep time of prayer. But all this time there was a sense, okay, the world's getting ready to be rocked. Death is coming everywhere. As you know, we lost well over a million people to COVID, at least that we counted in America. And as I got close, I ended up in a prayer movement called Unite 714, some of you participated. Literally hundreds of millions literally prayed in 191 nations. And, and all along as I, I would meet with the greatest leaders in the world, I met with the greatest leaders of mega movements in Africa. Like from, it, it's just astonishing. But every one of them, I would tell them, when we come out of this, God's presence is coming. I, I remember it's a true story. It's recorded. I met, I met with the greatest leaders in Africa. Massive leaders. We're on Zoom. Said, I'm coming to you from America. Not as some 
not another white man wanting to help Africa. I'm going to tell you now, Jesus has come to me and, and the continent of Africa will end up more untouched than any other continent before you're done. I might add that was true. And I said, I saw Jesus weeping over Africa and said, enough is enough. I'm coming now as your brother to beg Africa to pray for us that we can survive. What a meeting it was. But all during those years, I knew that something was coming. As we came toward October 2021, I began to realize if we were halfway done in May of 2000, um, May of 2000, whatever it was. Yeah, 2000, whatever it was. Yeah. Then by October, what were we done with? Well, I thought, I'll bet COVID's going to change. And of course it did. We went from pandemic to endemic. And then God began to speak to me about the Ukraine. Let me just say now, I've worked with 2,000 churches in Russia, been all over Russia. So I'm talking, just, the Lord just said, I, I called our Ukrainian pastors. We're afraid what's going to happen. Well, Russia's going to invade you. But you're not to be afraid. The Lion of Judah will deal with the bear. And you know, and, and so I was sitting in January, the Lord showed me of 2000, whatever it was, 22, that um, God was going to move supernaturally. I was there in February. God said, Russia will invade Monday. Don't be afraid. It'll be worse for them than Afghanistan. I will not allow Ukraine to be destroyed. In fact, I'm going to revive that part of the world. Russia, Ukraine. See, God's never surprised. Like, where are we now? What's that mean? I was sitting in Louisiana. And Louisiana is different than most of America. It's still under... French law, not English common law. So like what they, call, you know, like we have counties, they've got parishes. And so I was in the poorest, most broken parish in Louisiana. Massive poverty. Preaching in a, a campus of a great multi-site church. They've been one of my dear Hispanic friends, an incredible church. And I was sitting in the green room. I love Louisiana. It's one of my favorite places to eat. You know, they've got a tremendous food. I was eating a big biscuit, getting my strength up to preach. And the next thing I knew, I saw, I just saw this giant foot come down from heaven. I thought you're going to smash me for eating this biscuit. But humor, <laughs> let me get one more before I die. But humor aside, I saw this giant foot come down and God said, I'm pressing the accelerator of my church for 36 months. And all over the world, that's happening. Things are accelerating. God's moving. And that end of that 36 months will come in December of 2024. And, um, or November. I can't quite remember how that works. But anyway, around there. And as I saw that three years end, I saw the church like break the earth's atmosphere and the glory shine over the world. So I imagine as we come toward the end of 2024, we'll see even an uptick in revival. Now, let me say a few more things and I want to come down to Africa. You know, basically, as, as I've walked through the Lord, I can remember June 9th seeing Jesus walking across to America. And let me, I just tell you, beloved, America's in trouble. And I know everyone, we're wealthy and all those things are true, but we're brutally polarized. Um, I, I think we haven't been this polarized since the 1840s leading to the Civil War. Am I saying we're going to have another civil war? No, I don't believe we are. But we have a lot of radical forms of states' rights, deep polarization, fear, brokenness. If God does not touch us, we will continue our decline. That is the fact. But I saw Jesus walking across America. He began to pray to his father, one more time, Father, one more time. I knew he was praying for revival. I saw a drop of water come, begin to form an ecosystem, he said, the first drops are falling, Jim. It's not business as usual. It's not business as usual. In August 22nd, 2022 in Texas, he said, the cloud of my presence is coming to churches everywhere. All send the cloud. They must seat it in their worship, their prayers, and their love. And if they do, it'll rain. In August 24th, I was in Birmingham, Alabama. I was praying. I was crying out. I laid down. I was just burdened for the world. What are you going to do in the world, God? Like, what revival is going to happen in the world? The next thing I knew, I looked off and in a vision, 
across the screen of my imagination, I was taken to the UK. No one knew the queen was sick then. All of the UK was weeping from Northern Ireland to Scotland to Wales to um, uh, England itself. Ireland, I mean, and even though it's not officially part of the UK, just weeping, breaking. I said, my gosh, what's happened? And they were lowering the Union Jack. I thought, who's died? Like, what's happened? The next thing I knew, Jesus grabbed the lanyard, which had the flag on the mast, pulled it. The Union Jack went screaming to the top. Lightning flashed. God said, I've not forgotten my promises to the UK. My glory will be restored. And he said, in fact, Jim, I'm opening, I'm opening the ancient wells of revival everywhere in the world. It struck me so deeply. A week later, he said this, when the Queen of England dies, you'll know revival's imminent. Now that moved on me by the Spirit. Now, let me talk with you about the world for a moment, and we'll have the world map up there. You know, you, let's talk, let me just make one comment about North and South America for a moment. Then I really want to concentrate on the Caribbean and Central America. Then I want to go to Africa. I'll start in the North, go to the Horn, and come to South Africa. I was sitting in my office. It was February 3rd of... Um, well, 2023. And I knew when the first drops had been falling, it was pretty clear. And the next thing I knew, I saw these storm clouds coming to that hemisphere. And I just, and, and I saw thunderheads coming in. Do you have thunderstorms here in South Africa too? So I saw, you know, did you, how many of you know thunderstorm, thunderheads come in the, a pillar of the cloud? Cumulus cloud stack. I might add most of the theopanies or big appearances of God in the Old Testament are in thunderstorms. But anyway, that's another point. So God said, Jim, the first drops are still landing, but I'm bringing thunderstorms of revival. Watch what I do. They begin to sweep. Well, the next week in Asbury, maybe you heard the word Asbury, one stoplight, 6,000 people, little college. Many of our people like Pastor Steve and others have gotten their degrees there. They asked us to plan a church. Well, a few students, they were in a chapel. The guy that preached said it was my worst sermon ever. 21 students stayed to play. God decided to come to church. They got on TikTok. They got on, you know, Facebook Messenger. They got on WhatsApp, everything else. And by the time two weeks had ended, 70,000 people had come. By the end, 20,000 people would be on the campus lining up to come. It was an ugly building, wood, not much technology. This is the Taj Mahal compared to their chapel. What happened? God showed up. A million hits on TikTok. Asbury Revival. It spread to 200 campuses across America. Recently at Auburn, the head football coach was baptizing students late at night in a lake on the campus as God moved. And God's touching campuses. God's moving. Why? Rain's coming. God's moving by his spirit. He's supernaturally moving by his spirit. This is real. Now, let's look at, let's look. I'm going to point out to you, concentrating, I'm going to start in the Caribbean. You'll see why in a moment. Then we'll put the map of Africa. Basically, how many of you know your church is involved in the Caribbean? Raise your hand. What is the pastor's name that's going from here? Pastor Julius will be going to St. Thomas. Now, why is this important? You can see North America. You can see Mexico. You can see that little isthmus coming down to South America. That's Central America. We have a great church that will be an apostolic center in Panama. Then you see that little squiggly line um, there. and that little, the, There should be a lot more little dots there. That's the Caribbean. Aren't there 13 different nations in the Caribbean? There's some territories. Is that long squiggly when Cuba I'm looking at probably? And so why is that important? Because I have seen over and over in my prayer time an absolute tidal wave of the spirit sweeping over all of the Caribbean and just 
dousing Central America, hitting Mexico, especially in the central part of Mexico around Mexico City. And this is incredible. You're going to, have, you're going to be planning a church in St. Thomas, where we already have a building waiting of 400, which was the central point for the Atlantic slave trade. Now, we happen to have our team from High Point Church here to the Caribbean. Please stand to your feet right now. I want you to put your hands toward them. I'm sorry, Pastor Julius is not here, but I want to prophesy. And so, because your church is planning, I think the first church from Africa ever. Simon, you and Lindy, I got, I got to have something. Go stand over there and make me feel better about it. Uh, thus saith the Lord, I want you to understand, I'm going to swamp by my spirit and by my presence, the Caribbean. And even as that's been the home to many of the nastiest hurricanes, so a hurricane of my spirit is going to come over that island. And even as hurricanes have left that island a shell, I will remake it spiritually. And you are going to come in to a time of rain in the Caribbean that will not cease. You say it's raining now. No, it's showering now. You've yet to see the rain. For if I really rained, there would be a runoff because you can't yet contain the fruit. And I'm raising up a church there. And what's our leader's name? I met you. What's your name? Chelsea. Step out, Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea, my hand's on you. I met you in the seminary, didn't I? I want you to know there's a tremendous leadership grace on you. You're humble. You're very bright. It's not like you needed a job and moved to the Caribbean. You're highly organized, very articulate. You're like a one-man band in many ways, one-woman band, better stated. You're very talented. You can speak in love. But I've placed a special anointing on you for that island. And I want you to know it's not going to end anytime soon. I've given you a grace for that area of the world. Be careful, says the Lord. For no, I've placed you there and put you there. Do not worry about looking a field. No, I'll bring you everything you need in the middle. I'm going to anoint you. It's been unusual. You've had more spiritual warfare than you've known what to do with. You're not normally a tormented woman, but the enemy's had a field day with your sleep at times. But I want you to know there is a heavy rain of my spirit that's going to fall. And I'm telling you now, I will sweep Cuba in a typhoon of my spirit. In fact, says the Lord, there is going to come in a matter of months an unusual loosening of the government. It'll start with the economy. It'll start with the finances. And I will make that nation within a decade an economic powerhouse. And I will unlock it. And as I unlock the economy, I will unlock the government. And I will unlock and raise up one of the great apostolic centers of the world. Who is this girl by you? Nika. Yep. Nika, my hand's on you. You're very musical, quite a character, very prophetic. You've had a lot of pain to manage in your life. Been no easy road coming up, has it? You've known pain since your earliest years. As a little girl, sometimes you'd want to wear earplugs and put an eye mask. But I didn't waste a bit of your pain. Very, you're a very lovely girl. Your heart is on fire, but you don't mess around. You're very plain spoken. You're very prophetic. You hear me. You see me. What's your mom's name? Been no easy road for her either. Her heart's almost failed her even physically. Death marked and marred her family early on. My hand's on you. I sent you there. You feel at home there. Who's your buddy there? How old are you, Heather? 38. Oh, you've always had an old soul. You don't look 38, by the way. You look, look maybe 18. Well, I'll be honest prophetically, 28. Now listen, I can't lie in the presence of the Lord. But, but, let, but let me tell you right now, my hand's on you. You have a very deep pastoral grace. My anointing and my grace is on you. Uh, it's, like, it's like I've sent the three female amigos to save an island. I'll do it. It's going to pour down rain. Julius is going to walk into a rainstorm. You'll look back and realize the growth was so fast, it stunned you. 
right place, right time. Let's give them a hand. Sit down. Now, I do that here because none of this is going to be possible without Julius. I just hate to tell you, Julius won't be the last person you send. There'll be a number that come. Many of you have wanted a Caribbean vacation. This could be it. Okay. Now, let's put Africa, let's put Africa up there. Let me just give you a quick thought on the um, continent of Africa. Look at Northern Africa up there. I've seen an unusual moving of God's spirit coming to Algeria. In fact, I can feel it in Tunisia too. Tunisia is pretty small compared to Algeria and um, Morocco too, but I first felt it in Algeria. But in the same way, I felt waves of the spirit coming to the Caribbean. You see the horn of Africa there. I felt the horn of Africa hitting the waves of the spirit. One of the ancient wells that I believe got opening. In fact, one of the most astonishing kingdoms um, in the history of the world was the kingdom of Aksum. And the king, I'm not pronouncing it, but the kingdom of Aksum would be a lot of what you see in modern day Ethiopia right now, going up into Sudan. Um, is it Eritrea? Am I saying that right? I'm not really good at it. Eritrea, uh, Djibouti, um, uh, Somalia. Then if you cross the Gulf, you see Yemen. Um, a lot of that was all part of this astonishing kingdom. And this, and got Ethiopia, of course, big there. God is going to open a flood tide in Ethiopia. We know there's been war there. And then, of course, go down a little deeper. You're going to come to Uganda, where we have Ronnie. Some of you know him. That will become a mighty apostolic center. Um, you know, Somali, it's no, been no easy matter. But the Holy Spirit is going to drench that area. That brings me down to South Africa. You know, everybody wants to write South Africa's epitaph. Nutty prophets in the States were saying it was going to end in blood. It was all over. Um, it ended in one of the greatest leaders in our age, Mandela. They haven't prophesied much since, thankfully. But anyway, <laughs> they had Mandela. Now, and once again, people are saying, can South Africa overcome their problems? Are they going to be a failed state? Everybody likes to run it. Let me say this before I prophesy to you about South Africa. What is impossible with man, who cares? All things are possible with God. And I just want to say to you that I, I felt God's great love. Simon, and some of you have heard me prophesy about South Africa before. Things I've said that have come to pass. And I want to say this. Thus saith the Lord. Some of you have been deeply depressed and despairing. It's almost like you've allowed the enemy to write off your future, to write off your country. You've wondered, is there any hope for our country? There's unemployment, there's power shortages, there's, there's immigration things left and right, there's corruption. I want you to know, I've not lost hope for your country. And I've written this country on the palm of my hands. The next five years, says the Lord, will have their complexities but I'll begin to pour out my spirit on this church and on this nation and on the church of this nation. I want you to know the fires that you see burning are not a crematorium. They're not the fires that will burn up this nation. Oh, no. They are a forge, for I'm reforging it and I'm transforming it. And there will be a meltdown in some of the present political system. In fact, there will seem to be a power vacuum that comes over the next, if I see it correctly, 23 to 24 months. And many will wonder what's going to fill it. Let me tell you now, the Holy Ghost will. And I'm going to sweep over this nation. I'm going to touch this nation. I'm going to move on this nation. And I'm telling you by my spirit and power. Sudden calamities will come. If I see it correctly, I, I see a car accident. I see an assassination, whether they're one of the two, I can't tell. But you'll watch a major figure 
taken down and taken out. Some will cry foul. Some will cry out of thankfulness. But in the middle of it, I'll move. Be careful with news feeds. Be careful about feeding on despair. Feed on the good news. For I have a plan. I have a purpose for this nation that is yet to be fulfilled. I wasn't going to do this, but I'm sorry, Simon. I'm kind of all over everywhere today. I want to say something to you, young man with the blue shirt. Come forward. Do you have a wife? Anybody married? I was, I was thinking if he didn't marry her, he's crazy. Okay, come on up. (laughs) Come up on stage with me. Simon and Lindy, come up. Folks, I'm sorry. You're already late, and you're going to be later, so I'm sorry. Okay. What's your name, great woman? Navilia. Say it again. Navilia. So very nice to meet you. What's your name? Uzamo. Uzamo. Yeah. Do you have children? Yeah. One daughter. Well, what's her name? Elise. How old is she? She's eight. Oh, my goodness gracious. How long have you guys been married? Okay, wonderful, so wonderful, okay. Man, your daughter's precious. So lovely, so precious. There's a miracle that marks her life, too. It's a miracle that you even have that girl. In fact, there's been some things that have besieged her and tried to affect her. You've had to fight for her some. Um, It's almost like the enemy's tried to snuff that little life out before. But I want you to know it's not going to happen. For her life is bound in the very life of God. She's an unusual child, too. Very precious. My spirit dwells on her. Sometimes she breaks your heart and you cry when you see her. You know, you're a very talented man. There's been deep talent in your family. Um, quite an interesting history in your family. Uh, there's a governmental gift on you. You're a leader. You're a very strong leader. You're very articulate. You're never a yes man. Um, If someone doesn't want the truth, it's best not to be your friend. Um, You'll tell them you really love God, but you're not an easy believer. Um, You're very complex. And you've had reason reason to hate church at times. Not this one, but in general. There was a day you wanted nothing to do with it. But I want you to know I'm going to place some government on your shoulders in the church and out of the church. There's some political destiny wrapped in these families. There's great leaders in these families. Um, you married very well. Thank you. Um, she didn't do bad either. And you married very well. She's obviously lovely, but her heart's far prettier than her face. She's guileless. You're very talented yourself. Very articulate. You don't miss anything. You have an eye for the smallest detail in what he wears, what happens, how things look. You're not critical, you're just observant. Um, You were raised to lead, but you watched your family bleed. Um, Your family got robbed from a lot of things in a five-year period, and it broke your dad's heart. And it was very hard for you to watch. Tears became your bread as a beautiful young woman. Um, Death robbed your family for that matter. But I'm here to tell you, your greatest years are ahead. There's a gift of government and influence coming on your shoulders, both in the church and out of the church. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, that was the introduction to the message. I hope you enjoyed it. (laughs) Humor aside, give me about five or six minutes. I'll summarize this. God's in the process of visiting the world. You know, beloved, you say, Jim, what are your politics? Jesus. I'm not partisan about anything but Jesus. I love my country. Yes, I do. I served in an elite military unit many years ago. But I love the kingdom of heaven far more than the kingdom of America. I've lived in a war zone, almost lost my life, risked my life for the gospel. And when I got there, God told me in the middle of this terrible war where people were killed and left dead in front of my house, if you're here as an American, go home. You're a Christian first, an American second. And how do I vote in America? Not as a portly, aging white man, 
but is a handsome, thin Christian. <laughs> what I want is immaterial. What God wants is all that matters. God's going to visit this country. People ask me, what's your favorite country other than America? Quite honestly, this one. And, I, and other than the Philippines, I've been here more than any other country. We know in the Bible, God visits individuals. I'm not going to bore you to talk about it. We know he visits groups. We know it's pretty important because the worst thing a country wants to do is miss the day of its visitation. In the book of Luke, 1941 through 44, Jesus comes into Jerusalem and cries. He's not crying because they're going to kill him. He's not crying because they reject him. He's crying because they've missed the day of their visitation. That God walked among them in miracle power. They did not perceive it. And because of that, they would lose their nation. They would lose Jerusalem. It's a big deal. How do we as Christians respond to this? How can we walk in such a way that we don't miss the day of our visitation. Paul says, and I'm going very quickly here, in 1 Peter 2.12, how we conduct ourselves in a broken society. And Paul was living in the Roman world where half of, half of Rome was slaves, where they were massive slavery, rape, killing, murder, where the favorite sport was gladiator games. And he said this, they speak against you as evildoers. Your good is called evil, but don't quit because when God visits, they'll remember that, they'll glorify him. In reality, it starts with you. I don't just mean you as in every nation, I mean the church in South Africa. There's a lot of great churches in South Africa, not just every nation. I happen to be part of the every nation family. I also realize we're not the only family God's using. How do you not miss this? How do you respond? What do you do? What needs to happen? In Revelation 3.20, Jesus is speaking and he's not speaking. We use this to reach people that don't know Jesus, it's really to Christians. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If you can hear my voice or hear my knock and open the door, I'll come into them and eat with him and he with me. Beloved, listen to me. Can you tell when God's knocking at your heart? Can you perceive when God's standing in front of you wanting to give you something? Wanting to come deeper into your life? Wanting to fellowship with you? Wanting to eat with you? Can you perceive that? How's God knock? How many have ever been at home and just felt a tremendous presence of God? He's knocking. Well, why is he knocking, Pastor Jim? Well, why don't you ask him? He's typically knocking when you're busy. The spring bucks are playing. You're, 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 you're dealing with the most important game on your phone. What if God knocked during the spring buck game tonight? His presence came on you, then you were weeping and missed it. You say, please, Lord, not then. You say, Pastor Jim, when does God knock? when you don't want him to. Maybe it's that sense of pain or that sense of tears that just come to you for no reason. He's knocking. What do you do? Lord, what do you want? I'm stopping. What do you need? What do you want? I open my life to you. He interrupts me all the time. And when I miss it, that time doesn't come back again. He's knocking on millions in the body of Christ right now. He's knocking on the hundreds here this morning. His presence is a knock. His pain is a knock. 
his soft voice, need you, need you, need you. And when you throw your hands up and say, visit me, touch me, I open my heart to you, I open my life to you, I open to you. He'll come in and fellowship with you. Pastor Simon joined me up here. I'm going to close with this story from the Bible, from Genesis 18, and then turn it to Simon. Abraham was 98 years old. It was the heat of the day. Most people at 98 in the heat of the day are asleep. He'd been waiting 25 years to get a kid. Wife was decades beyond menopause. He looked out. He's an old man. Maybe it was a mirage. He thought that, you know, sand, I've been through that very desert where he was. You know, sand can reflect things. How many ever seen a mirage? You've been in the desert. And, and he, but somehow he realized because he knew what God felt like. He goes, that ain't a mirage. That's God. No one else with him realized it. Not all his servants, not his wife, no one. He's 98, but at 98, he'd been around God so much, he realized, for the first time in my life, God ain't coming to the altar. He's making a house call. Why is he standing out there? He wants to see if Abraham can recognize him. And if he recognizes, will he respond? That old man totters through that hot burning sand. Fast as he can go. Fast as he can go. Falls face down into that burning sand. I know what God's thinking. It was really a theopony, Jesus and two angels. Told the angels, Told you he'd come. Told you he'd feel me. He's laying in that sand, his tears. He goes, Father, she's gone. If I have found favor in your sight this day, don't pass me by. Just come home with me. He never said, where's my baby? Where's this? Where's that? Never ask. I mean, if God made a house call, you got a hundred things. Let's be honest. I have at least a 200. He said, I want one thing. I'll make you a meal. I'll give you some water to wash your feet. I don't want anything. God says, okay. He runs back. He said, Sarah, make your best bread. You know, he's got hundreds of servants, but he picks the lamb. Got hundreds of servants. He's a millionaire. But he waits on him, hand and foot. He's standing there. He won't even sit down to eat with him. He's 98. He's feeding him. Never asked for a thing. I remember reading that passage. God gave me a poem. I'll quote it, then I'll finish. I said, Lord, if I found favor in your sight, don't pass your servant by. Let my tears wash your feet. Let my praises tell them dry. Come sit under the tree of my worship. Come feed on my offered soul. For I just want to sit in your presence. For your countenance makes me whole. God said, where is she? Abraham go like, where's who? Sarah. She'd been eavesdropping in his conversations for years. The, the rest was history. In a year, she had a baby. You'd have thought he'd have been done. You see, you never get to, you'll never really get to know God on your agenda. It's not until your agenda ends and you stay with him. Abraham won't let him go. He's hobbling along in 98. And all of a sudden, there's 
there's a, a t- conversation in the Trinity. Jesus talks to Daddy. He goes, Dad, I can't keep anything back from this man. Dad, let's be honest with him. Abraham, I didn't just stop to see him. I've got a few bad reports about Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels and I are going to see if it's true. If it is, they're done. Abraham still loved Lot, even though Lot had abandoned him. Before Abraham left, he never asked for an Isaac. The angels went and Abraham stayed. The rest was history. Abraham and his daughters were spared. If you stood in front of your house, would you know it? If he crept up on you, would you feel him? He's coming to visit each and every one of you. He's drawing close. He's knocking even now. If you need God to visit you, stand up. Stand up to your feet. Raise your hands. Say this, Jesus, Jesus, visit me. Visit Visit my family. Visit my my community. Visit Visit Joburg. Joburg. Visit Visit South Africa. Visit Visit Africa. Visit Visit the world. world. I don't want to miss your knock. I want to open my heart to you. Visit me. Visit. what you're doing this morning, Lord God. Thank you, Father, that God, you are at work in our hearts, in our nation, in Africa, Father God. And Father, I thank you that God, this word that has come out this morning, we will treasure it, Father God, and we will see it come to fruition, Father God. Lord, we will be those who choose to believe. We choose to believe, Father, that what you have said you will accomplish, Father God. For he who promised is faithful. He who promised is faithful. Father, the word that had been spoken over our nation, South Africa, is coming to being, Father God. Revival is coming to our land. Revival is coming to Africa. Lord, as it has been prophesied, we will see revival from Cape to Cairo, Father God. We speak it to being in the name of Jesus. Father God, those who have lost faith and lost hope over our country, South Africa, I pray that today they will hope again. We will believe again. We will trust again. People have said so many things. Today our word is, but God. But God. But God. Revive us again, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Let's give God all the praise and the glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. If you're wondering, wondering what to do with that, and uh, and what is that for me, and how do I how do I respond to that, I would encourage you to to receive that word as from a father. And uh, if you're not sure about who that guy is and what was he on about, what I want to encourage you to do is to trust me, to trust Simon. When he says this guy is a father in this house and he prays for us and we're receiving that word as from the Lord. If you are hoping to hear something from the Lord, if you're hoping that the Lord would see you and pick you and, and, um, and speak something special over you, what I want to encourage you with is this. That, that when God speaks, he speaks corporately. And when, when we receive and we sit under prophecy, we sit under the spirit of testimony. And what that means is, if that word was good, grab it. 
That amen? That amen is for me too. Oh, I love that. Yes, Lord. That, do that for me too. That, that, that identity that you're speaking over, that, oh, I need that. I receive that for myself too. Why? If God is doing it for one person, he's doing it for all of us. Now we are going to have our ministry team that's going to be ministering. They're going to pray with you. Trust if you just want to kind of ask somebody to stand with you and contend a little bit further with, for, uh, with you as you're trusting to, to hear from the Lord. Uh, but um, we just want to let you know that the fun is not ending. We have an amazing service that's going to be happening tonight at 5 p.m. Uh, come drink again. Invite, invite a friend. Uh, we're going to be receiving ministry from Pastor Keith Tower. Pa- Pastor Keith, w- will you? We, we, um, we, we normally, please come join me. I, I, um, I, I promised myself that... Um, <laughs> the first time I met Pastor Keith, I made the, the mistake of standing next to him when we were doing a picture. And I have that picture where I fit snugly into his armpit. And I promised myself if I ever took a picture with him again, I would level the playing field. <laughs> we, um, we normally finish uh, with, a, with a benediction. Um, I'm going to ask Pastor Keith just to pray for us a special prayer of blessing over us. Just the, the word that Pastor Jim was ministering, but, um, but also just taking from the ministry that was happening here yesterday, people experiencing breakthrough in the area of peace and mental health that, that Pastor Keith would just pray and, and, um, and release that over us. Thank you. I have nothing better to pray over you than the words of God in a benediction. And I ask that the Lord of heaven and earth, may he bless you. May the Lord of heaven and earth keep you. May the Lord of heaven and earth make his face shine upon you. May he be good and may he be gracious to you. And may the goodness and grace of our Lord in heaven follow you wherever you go. And may your heart be open. May your eyes be ready to see the hour of your visitation. In the name of Jesus, amen. Ministry team, please, would you make your way to the front and get ready to minister? If it is your first time here today, please join us on your way out through the glass doors. Swing a left. That is our guest lounge. Uh, We have uh, an amazing team ready to meet with you there. Great coffee uh, at the coffee shop. Please make a turn there as well. God bless you.